Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Muhammad Ammar. In previous video, we started the topic of the invertebrate hormones, and in this video, we'll discuss its remaining part. In this video, we'll discuss about the annelids and the arthropod. The main focus will be on the arthropods uh, in crustaceans and insects. The process of ectodysis and morphogenesis will be discussed in this video. Annelids. They have well-developed endocrine control of physiological functions. The various endocrine systems of annelids are generally involved with the morphogenesis, development, growth, regeneration, and gonadal maturation. So, for the uh, for this process, they have endocrine system which is responsible to control these functions. In case of polychaetes, the juvenile hormone inhibits the gonads and stimulate growth and regeneration and gonadotropin stimulate the development of eggs so in case of polychaetes the juvenile, juvenile hormone inhibits the gonads and stimulates the growth and regeneration and gonadotropin stimulates the development of eggs in leeches a neuropeptide which is produced from the neurosecretory cells stimulate the gamete development and trigger the color changes so the color changes and the gamete development are controlled by the neuropeptides in case of leeches in oligochaetes the osmoregulatory hormones are present which perform their functions a hormone that is hyperglycemic it is present in oligochaetes and lumbricus and is responsible for the maintaining of the high concentration of blood glucose the next one is the arthropods the arthropods have advanced invertebrates and have excellent developed endo in case of crustaceans. The crustaceans such as the crayfish, these control function such as ectodysis, sex determination and color changes. We will discuss the process of ectodysis in crustaceans. The ectodysis is controlled by two organs that is the X organ and the Y organ. The X organs are neurosecretory tissues in the crayfish eye stacks and these are associated with the sinus glands that accumulate and release the secretion of the X organs. The other glands called the Y organs. These are two glands X organ and the Y organ. These are at the base of maxilla. So look at the diagram here here is the eye stack and it is zoom here this is eye you can see this is the X organ tissues and there is sinus gland which is associated with X organ we store the hormone that is more inhibiting hormones and here is the Y organ which is present in the base of the maxilla so we'll discuss the hormonal control of ectodysis, how the ectodysis occur. In the absence of an appropriate stimulus, the X organ produces MIH, the mold inhibiting hormone, and the sinus gland releases it. The target of this hormone is the Y organ. Keep in mind, in the absence of appropriate stimulus, the X organ produces mold inhibiting hormone and the sinus gland releases it. When MIH is present in high concentration, the Y organ is inactive. When there is no appropriate stimulus, the X organ pr produces MIH and when there is high concentration of MIH, the Y organ is inactive. And under appropriate stimulus that may be the internal or the external, the MIH is released, prevented. It means the MIH is inhibited or its release is prevented and the Y organ become active. When there is less amount of MIH, the Y organ become active and then Y organ release a hormone called the actisone. This hormone is responsible for the process of ectodysis or the molting. 
this hormone initiates and completes the molting and ecdysis in the crustaceans here is the flow sheet diagram of molting in the first diagram you can see when there is no appropriate stimulus or the appropriate stimulus is absent the x organ produce more mih this mih is stored in sinus gland and mih inhibit the product uh, production of actinone by y organ when there is high concentration of mih the y organ is inactive it doesn't produce the actinone so there is no molting and when there is appropriate stimulus that may be the internal or the external it causes central nervous system and the inhibition of mih production so the mih production is decreased or inhibited this causes the y organ to become active and y organ releases the actinone then this actinone cause the molting or the ecdysis here is the diagram of uh, for the production and release of mih to the from the x organ to the y organ so we'll discuss the ecdysis in case of insects insect do not have the hormone that is the mih or mold inhibiting hormone the presence of appropriate stimulus to the central nervous system activates certain neurosecretory cells that the pars intercerebellus and in the optic lobes of the brain to secrete the hormone that is adenosine which exons transport to the corpora cardiaca so there is no the mih in case of insects an appropriate stimulus to the central nervous system activate certain neurosecretory cells the neurosecretory cells in the optic lobe of brain secretes the hormone called adenosine this hormone transport to the corpora cardiaca and then corpora cardiaca produce another hormone that is the thyrotropic hormone this thyrotropic hormone which is carried to the parathyroid glands and stimulating them to produce and release actinone which induce molting so here the stimulation of the parathyroid gland is done by the hormone that reaches to the corpora cardiaca the corpora cardiaca produces the hormone that is the thyrotropic hormone this thyrotropic hormone initiate or stimulate the parathyroid gland to release the hormone that is the actinone and this actinone cause the molting or the ecdysis in case of insects there is a flow sheet diagram when there is proper stimulus it causes central nervous system and the neurosecretory cells of the brain produce adenosine hormone this hormone travels to the corpora cardiaca through axonal transport and the corpora cardiaca produce a uh, tropic hormone the thyrotropic hormone the th this thyrotropic hormone stimulate the parathyroid gland to produce actinone and then this actinone causes the molting in insects so here in the diagram these are the neurosecretory cells which produce uh, actinotrophin hormone then this hormone travel to the corpora cardiaca the then corpora cardiaca produce the hormone thyrotropic hormone which causes the prothyroid gland to produce actinone there is another process that is tanning or sclerotization it is the hardening and darkening of the cartilaginous outer layer after the molting the neurosecretory cells in the brain and nerve cord produce the hormone the bursicon the bursicon influences certain aspects of the epidermal development such as the tanning the tanning is completed several hours after each mold so what is tanning it is the hardening and darkening of the cartilaginous outer layer after the molting or ecdysis 
there is another and the last process in insects that is metamorphosis the hormone that is the juvenile hormone is involved in the morphological differentiation that occurs during the molding of insects it is produced by corpora alata high concentration of gh or the juvenile hormone in the blood of an insect inhibit differentiation so when there is high concentration of gh there is no differentiation or there is no metamorphosis in the absence of appropriate environmental stimuli when there is no stimulus the corpora alata decreases the gh production or inhibit the gh production which causes the insect larva to differentiate into a pupa so when there is high concentration of gh hormone or the juvenile hormone there is no differentiation there is no metamorphosis and on proper stimulus when there is a uh, low concentration of gh hormone or the corpora alata decreases the amount of gh production it causes the insects to differentiate into a pupa then the pupa then form a cocoon to a overwinter and in springs the final surge of the ectosome in the absence of gh transform the pupa into adult moth so here is the flow sheet diagram when there is appropriate stimulus absent the corpora alata decreases the gh hormone production and when the gh hormone production is decreased the larva differentiate and form the pupa and when pupa then uh, differentiate into a cocoon in the overwinter and a final surge of the ectosomes in the absence of juvenile hormone causes transformation of pupa into a adult moth thank you so much this is everything about the invertebrate hormones there are two parts of this topic videos so kindly watch the two videos to complete this topic and subscribe my channel for more videos thank you so much